Welcome everyone. Um, today, this is the finals team 10 presentation on the security assessment and debrief. Um, so before we start, I just wanted to start with a little bit of introductions. My name is Joel. I am the captain for this team. Um, we've got Jacob, Philip, Ryan, um, Trevor, and James with us today. Um, to start out, we want to just go over a little bit of overview about what we're going to talk about today. So starting out, we're going to talk to you you all about the um, assessment, give you a little bit of background on what we did, and um, talk about the reassessment, what we did last time and how things fared this time around. We're going to move directly into some compliance overview, how you guys fared with um, any compliance um, with payment card industries and um, how that affected your business. And then we're going to move from there into some technical violence. These findings are kind of the reasons of any compliance failures. Um, and so we wanted to just highlight the top things that we found in your environment. Then from there, we're going to go into business impact. Why do these findings even matter to your business? How does it affect you? And then finally, remediation. We're going to talk to you about how you can fix these issues, what sorts of things you can do to better um, increase your security posture at the Cozy Croissant. So to start off with assessment overview, here's Jacob. So this assessment was part of a reassessment that we were doing. We assessed your company back in November. And this was a reassessment to test for vulnerabilities that we found then, as well as new vulnerabilities, and test compliance and governance requirements. About 35% of the vulnerabilities that we found in our first assessment were either remediated, or the system containing it were completely removed if that system was not needed. About 18% were partially remediated, that means that the measure that was taken was partially working or it did not do the intended effect and we were still able to get around and get into that vulnerability. However, we do want to commend you for the ACLs that were in place for your network segmentation. They were very effective and we noticed immediately the increased security and difficulty that we had navigating through your network. To talk about the next part for compliance, we have Philip. Yeah, so during our test, during our testing, we wanted to be sure to evaluate the Cozy Croissant for any compliance issues with uh, potential governing authorities because we wanted to ensure that any fines applicable would be able to be kept to a minimum for your organization. So we uh, evaluated your uh, company based on the payment card industry data security uh, standards, or PCI DSS. So there's 12 uh, separate requirements for PCI DSS. And overall, we found that about 50% of those requirements had failed. And we found about 44 individual um, violations of PCI DSS requirements. Uh, the other 50% of requirements that weren't failed were either just we weren't able to test them due to um, them being a physical test of um, being able to access uh, credit card information for customers and that sort of thing. Um, these um, can be fines up to uh, $100,000 a month uh, per month of non-compliance. So we wanted to really make sure that uh, you all are able to remediate these issues as soon as possible because ultimately uh, it'll be cheaper to remediate the vulnerabilities leading to these uh, failed requirements than to continue paying any fines for this. And moving on, uh, Ryan's going to be talking about technical fines. Yeah, so obviously a big reason why we're all here is to see what were the top things that were found on your network so that you guys can help secure your guys' network and we can provide the Cozy Croissant with helpful intelligence to be able to secure the networks. So here's our top criticality um, findings. However, we kind of wanted to lump them into three main categories, which was the kiosk, uh, network segmentation, along with kind of lumped together password policy as long as, and as well as the policy of least privileges. So the first two deal with kiosk, which we found that the administrator account on kiosks didn't have, had no password, which allowed anyone on the guest network to RDP into the kiosk and be able to have administrator level access, if given if they were able to break out of the kiosk, which we were able to find multiple ways to do that as well. As well as that, once we were able to break out, we found administrator clear text credentials, which led to further network and full domain compromise uh, to your uh, corporate network. As well as this, you guys did implement the ACL, so we obviously want to commend you for that. However, there were some holes that we found being able to pivot from the guest network 
into the corporate network to circumvent these ACLs. And so Joel, uh, James will talk about this later, about some little fixes you guys can make to make that shirt up and make sure that you guys are completely secure in segmentation. The last was we, we password policy as long as, as well as just following the principle of least privileges for your users and also making sure to extend that to customer accounts because we found as even though that uh, the password policy increased for your users, there was still no password policy in place for your customers, especially in their rewards portal. Um, so we wanted to make sure that those issues were brought to light so that way you guys can be more secure. Uh, so now let's talk about how this impacts your business from a financial standpoint and business impact. I'll turn it over to Trevor. So we talked about a lot of the technical, the what we found, and at this point it doesn't matter a whole ton to you as a business. So here I want to present to you three primary ways in which these findings affect your business practically. First is the possibility for damage to customer reputation. As the part of the hospitality industry, you rely a lot on repeat customers, word of mouth, and reviews to sustain your business. Some of our vulnerabilities would prevent or would provide ways for attackers to create data breaches within your customer data. If these breaches occur and the news finds out about it and things start to get reported, your customers may have a hard time trusting you with their personal information to register for accounts and their payment information to provide you with the funds required to stay at your hotel. Compliance and fines are also a concern. As Philip mentioned earlier, the PCI DSS fines can be quite heavy. Uh, up to $100,000 per month is what we calculated depending on how many months you've been in non-compliance. Remediation of these vulnerabilities that we found would be much cheaper than paying month over month for these fines. Finally, we want to talk, I want to talk about profitability and efficiency. Each computer on your network has, was created and designed for a specific use case. Vulnerabilities discovered on the systems can potentially cripple, weaken, or lessen the effectiveness of these use cases for both your customers and your employees. And as we know in the business industry, time is money. So the more efficient that you can be with your computational resources, the higher your profits will be. All three of these directly affect your business and were found to be entirely possible based on the vulnerabilities we found. To remediate them, I will be handing it over to James. Yeah, so that's the bad news. The good news is there's something we can do about it. So we have four main areas that we want to see remediated, and these will help improve your security a lot, keep your business and your customers secure. So the first thing was complete network segmentation. As we mentioned earlier, that's something you all did really well initially. There's a couple improvements that could be made using VLANs to separate your corporate and your um, external networks. But overall, good, good work with that. We just want to see a little bit more. Another finding that we had was using dedicated kiosk software would go a long way in keeping your network secure. The uh, Microsoft software that is on it isn't meant to be used for kiosks. So using dedicated kiosk software would streamline that from a security standpoint and make it easier to manage for your employees as well. And then the last two go together, enforcing the principle of least privilege and enforcing a strong password policy. Both of these controls ensure that, um, well, with the passwords, that um, all, of your, all of your data is more secure because um, your, your, customer, your customer data is more secure and overall just the organization is a lot better prepared to fight data breaches and things like that. At this point, do we have any questions? Yes, thank you all. A uh, really uh, clear presentation. Um, do you believe that if we were to move to the cloud, we could solve all the problems here? Um, I would say that uh, the cloud is a great solution, and I think cloud does remediate some. It depends on what solutions you go. If you go for more of a SaaS solution, which is a solution, or, uh, sorry, a service as a solution, then that's more managed by AWS or Azure or whatever cloud provider you do. So that does take some of the risk out of your industry and put it on to the cloud provider. However, a lot of these industries, and I'm pretty sure most cloud providers are shared responsibility, so there still will be security controls that you guys will have to manage um, and take account of. However, I would say it is advantageous to move some resources to the cloud, but I think it's a case-by-case -case basis to see which ones would be most helpful in the cloud and what, um, also looking at the policies of the providers and seeing what they're responsible for and what you're responsible for, so that way, one of you guys don't get burned if someone doesn't cover the certain assets that they're responsible for. 